Lux presents Hollywood. <laughs> Lever Brothers Company, the makers of Lux Flakes, bring you the Lux Radio Theater, starring June Haver and Lon McAllister in Scudder Who, Scudder Hay. Ladies and gentlemen, your producer, Mr. William Keeley. Greetings from Hollywood, ladies and gentlemen. To the average city dweller, the title Scudder Who's Gutter Hay had an unfamiliar sound when 20th Century Fox released the picture. But film fans soon discovered its meaning and found unusual drama in this story of a boy and girl and their search for the American dream. Our stars are the same ones you saw on the screen, June Haver and Lon McAllister with June in the kind of romantic role that first brought her to stardom, and Lon as a boy who fights for what he believes is right. Scudder Who, Scudder Hay is a story of life on a farm, but these days Americans who live on farms drive the same cars, see the same pictures, and use Lux Flakes just like their friends in town. As a matter of fact, farm housewives long ago discovered the extra economy of Lux Flakes. Here's the curtain now for Scudder Who, Scudder Hay, starring June Haver as Rad and Lon McAllister as Snug. It's a bright spring morning, and at the McGill farm, one of the neighbors has come to ask a favor. You're concentrating on feeding them chickens, Rad. Oh, hi, Snug. I didn't see you. I'm trying to hitch a ride into town. Pa needs a new drag chain. I figured you might be going in. Oh, gee, I'd love to, Snug, but I got chores to do. Oh, well, okay. In that case, I'll walk then. Oh, but Ma's going in right away. She'll take you. Oh, swell. You don't look very nice to be going into town. Oh, I've been helping Pa all morning. Why don't you dress neat like your brother? I told you a hundred times, Stretch ain't no brother of mine. Okay, stepbrother then. His ma married your pa, didn't she? I always think of Stretch as your brother. You always think of Stretch, period. <laughs> Mom's going to buy me a new bathing suit this morning. What color should I get, Snug? I don't care. You don't care? Well, in that case, I think I'll get yellow. Stretch likes me in yellow. Say, you need a haircut. Yeah? So what? <laughs> I'd love to get you mad, Snug. You're real cute when you're mad. Now, look, Rat, I didn't come over <laughs> Tell here. Tell me some other time. Just get up to the house if you want to ride in the town. All right. All right. Well, good morning, Snug. Uh, you want a haircut, eh? Well, sit down. Uh, make it snappy, will you, Frank? I'm in kind of a hurry. Oh, sure, sure. Uh, how's things out at the farm? Oh, all right, I guess. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, I ain't seen Stretch in quite a spell. Uh, he ain't sick, is he? No, no such luck. Oh, now, that ain't a nice way to talk about your big brother. Now, lay off of me, Frank. He ain't no brother of mine, and he ain't so big no more. You uh, think you could whip him in a fight? Could be. I'd sure like to try. Well, here I am. Any time you say. Oh, now, 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 now. Take it easy, Snug. Take it easy. <laughs> you didn't know that was your big brother under the towel, did you? <laughs> you sure fell right into it, didn't you, kid, huh? <laughs> Getting kind of big for your britches, ain't you, Snug? Now you get back in your chair, Stretch. We was just joking. Maybe you were, but I'm not. Sit still or I'll cut your ears off. I'm in no hurry, Snug. You want to start something, you know where to find me. You them. bet I do. Yes, sirree. Mighty big for his britches. Morning, Stretch. You sleep good, son? Breakfast ready, Ma. Just you sit right down. Oh, hot cakes, huh? Something wrong, Stretch? These things taste as tough as they look. Now, wait How till Milton and Snug go out and I'll fix you another batch. Special. Good morning. Well, I said good morning. I hear you. You ain't too big yet, young fella, for me to learn you some manners. You tend to your son and I'll tend to mine. Where is he? Where is Snug? How should I know? Probably going swimming in the creek. Swims too much, if you ask me. Nobody asked you. It ain't your crick. Morning, Pa. Hello, son. Late, ain't you? Yeah, I'm, I'm sorry. Morning. Get that dog out of here. Oh, leave him be. He won't hurt none. Get that dog out of my house. Your house. Your house. You leave that dog stay. I said I want the dog out of the house. I say the dog stays, you hear me? Yes, sir. I heard you, Pa. Hey, where are my hotcakes? You're late. This is a farm, not a hotel. Fix the boy his breakfast. Let him fix it himself. Woman, I'm sick to death of your harping. I ain't gonna waste no more of my life waiting on your good-for-nothing son. Oh, once you're gonna shut up and listen to me. 
Nine years ago, my Marty died, and you was all for joining hands in a home. You and Stretch here along with me and Snug. No sugar-cured hams was ever smoother to the taste until you got me hogtied and married. Nobody held a gun in your ribs. From that moment to this here, your clammy hammer tongue ain't ever ceased to swinging. It ain't so much you're a woman that keeps me from hauling off on you. It's a, it's a thought of how much you'd like to see me land in jail. So, what are you gonna do, Mr. Milton Dominey? Do? I'm getting out. I'm through with you. I stuck it out as long as Snug here was little and needed care, even as such care as you gave him. But that day is gone, and I'm going with it. I'm going back to sea. You out of your head. You're afraid. You're stuck here till you die. I'll show you how stuck I be. I'm walking straight out that door, and I'm never coming back. Not a boy, Pa. I done it, Stretch. I done it. I'll run him out good, and he's brat along with him. Since you two are my nearest neighbors, I want you to help Snug and me. I just made me out of will, see? Your will, huh? You feeling sick, Milt? I'm feeling fine, Rolf McGill. Just happens I got a belly full of that woman. Now read it. Uh, <clears throat> I hereby leave to my son, Daniel Dominey, commonly known as Snug, everything of which I die possessed. Signed by Milton Dominey, him being present and in the presence of each other. Sign it here, Aurora. Hey, you too, Tony. Yeah. And you keep this will, Tony. If anything happens, I... I want you to see that Snug here gets hidden. Sure, Milt, sure. If you're leaving, Pa, then I am too. No. No, I want you to stay here, Snug. Look after my interests and your own. Will you do that for me? If that's what you want. Thanks, Snug. Here. Here's $20 to cheer you up. Well, I... I gotta get to the bus station. You wait a while and I'll drive you in. It's better I go now. So long, son. Take care of yourself. Good luck, Pa. You'll hear from me. All right. Your pa's a fine man, Snug, but stubborn as a mule. Stubborn as a what? You heard me, a mule. What do you know about mules? I aim to learn plenty, see? Want to buy me a team, see? Well, Snug, don't know what your plans are, but that sawtooth woman wears on you. How about working for me? Eight dollars a week with dinner. Sunday's off and you sleep to home. Make it ten dollars and you got yourself a deal. You're hired. You can ride to town with me later on. Gonna pick out them mules. What you know about mules, Rora McGill, you can put in my eye. A mule ain't no ordinary creature. Why, a mule... You're working for me, Snug. You're staying with him. Go on with him, son. But any day it gets so you can't stand his bell, and you can come on over with me. Just you fix that fence of yours, Tony, before I get the law after you. Come on, Snug. Let's get to work. <laughs> Get off that swing and find me my town hat. Okay, Pa. Hi, Snug. Hi. Hey, Ma, Rad, where's my coat? Where's my hat and coat? Oh, you always hollering. Morning, Snug. Howdy, Miss Miguel. Hi, Rad. Well, what are you doing here so early? I hired him to work for me. And I don't want you wasting his time lollygagging, you hear? Me? Why, Pa. I throw him back in the crick when I hook him as little as him. Brad, you're terrible. Look, Pop, even his ears get red when he blushes. <laughs> Why ain't you in school? Oh, Pa, because it ain't time yet. Oh. Oh, wait here, Snug. I'll get the car. Come on, Red. We'd better get him his hat and coat. Kind of stuck on Red, ain't you? No, you Frosney. I'm not stuck on her, you Frosney. You quit calling me that dumb name, you hear? It's your real name, isn't it? Can I help it? Ma took my name out of a book? My name's Bean, and everybody calls me Bean. You quit using that dumb name, you hear? You quit kidding me about Rad, and maybe I will. Well, I still think you're stuck on her. No, come on there, come on. So, it's you. Thought you shipped out with your pa. Seems you were mistaken, then. Where you been all day? Well, I ain't been loafing. Where's supper? Them that don't work, don't eat. Okay. But don't figure on running me out of here like you did my pa. This is still his place, and I'll be around, so don't get any idea that you own it. Now hear me, you snug. Work this farm or get out. I'm working over to McGill's. Then sleep over to McGill's. I'll sleep here whenever I please or nobody sleeps, and I'll eat here or nobody eats. Hark at him. Laying down the law. That's the charge my pa gave me, and I'll carry it out until he gets back. He talks big, don't he, Ma? Yeah, maybe I can do something about that. When I was but ten, Stretch, and you was all of fifteen, you beat me up so hard I was maimed for a month. Don't seem to have done you any good, though. 
Leastways, I ain't forgot. Now, where's my supper? Big hurry, ain't you? I gotta get back and help Mr. McGill. They're bringing him his two new mules. New mules, huh? Uh, maybe I'll just drop by. Yeah, and have Rad show him off to me. Oh, they're here all right, Snug. Those mules are just about tearing down the barn. Gee, they're sure pretty mules, Rad. Maybe your pa ain't handling them right. Who oh, can't tell who's making the most noise, the mules or him? A fella in town told me they're a mighty fine team, only they ain't had but one driver. Hey, did he tell that to Pa? Uh-uh, I don't think so. Sounds to me like your pa may have got stuck. Well, if he did, he'll never admit it. Not if it kills him. Stand still, you stubborn critter. I'll bridle you if it's the last thing I do. Pop, don't holler so loud. You're just scaring them. Stand still, you hear me? Can I ride one, Pop? Huh? Can I? You want to get killed? Get down here. Down! Don't show him that bridle, Mr. McGill. I think that's what's scaring him. Tony always said that if you... The heck with Tony. I'll handle him. That's Crowder, Rad. That one's named Crowder. Crowder? Well, the man who brought him told me that's because sometimes he kind of crowds you if you try to get in a stall. Oh, fine. And that other one, that's Moonbeam. Moonbeam and Crowder. Stop yapping so much. And why ain't you in school? Pop, it's past supper. Oh. Get that other mule in the stall, Snug. I'll get this one in there if I gotta kill him first. Hey, Red, I understand you got some new mule. Yeah, come on and see him, Stretch. They're sure pretty, but what disposition. Oh, boy, this is better in a circus. Give me that bridle, Snug. I'll teach this mule who owns him. Pop, be careful. Hey, he's crowding hey, against the stall. Don't stand there. Get me out of here. Oh! Stretch, oh. we'll do something. Well, I... All right, I'll try. Hand it up, pitchfork. Oh, Snug, no, no, Snug, no, you no, help him. Oh, he's got Stretch on a pitchfork, hasn't he? Oh, Snug, please. Oh, he don't deserve to be. Oh, all right, right. Try to kill me, will you? Crush me to death, will you? There! Ain't you done enough to him? Now stop it. Now lay off. Pop, Pop, are you all right? Oh. The other one's breaking down her stall. A couple of frisky mules, you ask me. Frisky, huh? Get me my gun. I'll kill them both. You're crazy. Pop, uh, calm down. You're hurt. Uh, trotting me to death trying to kill me? Now, now, wait a second. Why? There ain't no law against butchering your own stock. No, but but why shoot them? I'll buy them from you. You what? Yeah, five dollars a week for a whole year. Five dollars? That's only two hundred and sixty. I paid three hundred for them two mules. Well, I'll give you twenty dollars down besides. You'll only be out twenty dollars on the whole deal. Sold. Five dollars each week out of your wages for a whole year. Okay. Here. Here's the twenty my paw give me. Anybody got a pencil? Yeah, yeah, sure, Mr. McGill. Here. Brad, you write down what I say. I, uh, Daniel Dominey, known as Snug, hereby promises to pay Robert McGill... Known as Roarer. Snug, now be still. Five dollars a week out of wages for a year. For value received in the shape of two mules. Okay, I'll sign it. Now, that ain't all. If this contract is broke at any time, the mules again become the property of said Robert McGill. Agreed? Okay, sure. Now, get them mules out before they wreck what's left of my barn. Now, it's all right, Crowder. Take it easy, fella. Ain't nobody ever gonna scare you or hurt you again. What do you aim to take them? None of your business. Just you bring them home and you see what happens. My mules are well raised. I wouldn't take them within miles of you or your maw. Just get them out of here tonight. Red, how about a little drive, huh? And uh, maybe a movie? Oh, thanks, Stretch. I'd love to. Good night, Snug. Have fun with your mules. Yeah, Red. Thanks. <laughs> I ain't kidding you, Tony. They're mine. I, I just bought them off a of roar. You bought these mules? Yeah, only now I gotta find some place to keep them. Uh, just for tonight, I mean. What's the matter with my barn? Thanks, Tony. Well, you bought them off roar, huh? What'd you use for money? Well, I went in hock for my wages. Son, don't never go in hock for nothing. No? No. Eh, except maybe for a team like them. Boy, oh boy, is them mules. Say, you at yet? Well, no, not exactly. Well, get them beasts in the barn, and I'll fix us up some grub. Yeah, you're, you're sure some cook, Tony. Any fool can make a chicken stew. Hey, what's that bottle on the shelf? I thought you swore off drinking. Oh, well, that's just, uh, just cooking bourbon. Uh, you mind your vittles. You know, back home, she won't even give me a bite of food if I'm two seconds late. The Book of Revelations has got words for that woman, son. The abomination of desolation. You said it. If my true ma was here, Yeah, I... don't start that. You know, you're one of the luckiest boys on the face of the earth. What boy can look at a woman every day of his life and thank heaven she ain't his ma? 
Not one in a thousand. Now, about them mules. Must be something wrong with them. What's their blemish? Well, you ever hear about a one-driver mule team? Now, that's it. Yeah, I heard of them. Well, does that mean they're, they're dumb or what? Boy, don't ever use that word around a mule. You think mules is dumb? No, I, I just said... Well, it happens that these counties that brag on a man with as much brains as a mule. But in all my born days, I ain't never met him. Now, what man don't eat himself sick from time to time? But does a mule ever founder? No, sir. He's got too much sense. You ever see a mule over drink when he's hot? <laughs> Ain't mules as dumb, it's folks. So dumb they think a horse is intelligent. Well, ain't they? Well, what does a horse do when he puts his foot through a barbed wire fence? Well, I don't know. He saws it off. Yes, sir, he draws back in fright and saws the hoof clean off the joint. But not Mr. Mule. Mr. Mule lifts his foot up and out, as dainty as a ballet dancer, and goes about his business. It's only fools that think horses got brains, and a dog's man's best friend. Why, a mule will lay down his life day by day for the right man until he dies. You talk like you love mules, better than dogs even. Yeah, well, Grant, dogs has got brains and hearing and feeling. But you have to feed a dog. But the mule feeds you all his life. And I own a team of them. Yes, yeah, sir. It sure looks like you do. Snug, want a lick? No. What's good, clean eyes? No, thanks, Bean. Working for Pop sure has made you crabby. You said it. <sighs> kind of hot, ain't it? Go away. Well, gosh, I only asked if it wasn't kind of hot. Well, it don't get any cooler with you sitting around asking dumb questions. Bet you wished you went swimming today instead of working, huh? That's what Rad was doing. I ain't interested. I bet Stretch was interested. She snuck off real early this morning, took the skiff and headed downstream. Took her new bathing suit, too. Are you sure she went with Stretch? What do you care if you ain't interested? Hey, here she comes, all dressed up, too. Hi, Snug. Hello. You through work? Yeah. You tired? Anybody works all day for your paw would better be tired. Well, don't let him work you so hard, then. Are, are you doing anything tonight? Yeah. Important business. Oh, you and those mules. That's right, me and my mules. And in another week or so, those mules will do anything I want them to. Well, they can't go to the movies and hold hands with you. Good night, Rad. Well, I like that. After I practically invited I you... I Stretch like the yellow swimming suit. How do you know I was with Stretch? Uh-oh. Bean, now just wait till Mom, I... You come back Mom, here! Well, there they are, Snug, all finished. Bridles, Tony, new bridles, big ones. Now, them ain't no common bridles, son. Them's mule bonnets. Come here, I'll show you. Oh, oh, now, Moonbeam girl, oh, now. Easy, oh. easy, that Moonbeam. Easy, you, girl. You just sort of ease it on up. Get it back of their ears without ever touching them. Now, you see? Christ, Tony, you got her bridled. You see them ears, son? Proud. And they stay proud. <laughs> Women folks wear their pride all over their legs and their eyes and their hair. But a mule's got it all in them upstanding ears. Tony, do you think I could ever learn to drive them? Could be. I drove many a mule in my day. Ain't done it in years, but you know these nights when I can still smell their sweat. And here, way off, that old scatterhoo, scatterhay. What's that? Well, it means G and haw to you, boy, but you won't find it in nary a book, nor in the memory of many living men. Hey, but my teens, they'd, they'd lean to the ground for me till they drawed themselves to death. You ain't the only one who's got mule fever. I still got it. And let me tell you, son, a man with a team of mules, well, sir, he's in business. And you'll help me, Tony? Sure. 
sure I'll help you. You just give me a few days of tinkering with harnesses and such, and I'll see what I can do. Tony! Tony, look at him! Well, when did you do this? You got him hitched to your wagon. Well, after a week of tinkering, we're ready to try him out. Now, you settle down, boy. How's things going over to McGill's? Oh, all right, I guess. Old Roar's still roaring. And that daughter? <laughs> That's a sight in the yellow bathing suit if ever I seen one. Yeah. Well, uh, what about the mules? Well, there they are, son. Go to it. Me? You think I'm crazy, Tony? You're the one to drive them first. Well, they're your mules. <laughs> yeah, but you drove mules before I was born. I'll just stand back here and watch. Yeah, just as you say, boy. There. There. Now you watch how I hold the reins. All right. Let's go there. Get up, Crowder. Hey, up, Moonbeam. Come on, get. Come on, Crowder. Come on, Moonbeam. Come on, get to work. Get up now. It ain't no use, Snug. These mules won't budge for me. But why? I, I just don't understand it. Well, maybe if you get up there, see what you can do. Me? But if they won't drive for you, Tony, they won't drive for no one. <sighs> Did you ever think on pride, son? Pride? Pride has broke more men, split up more homes, and caused more murders than any other creature of the mind. And just now, for a second, I wished for a gun so as I could kill them mules. Just like Roar would have done. Well, I don't know as I'd have blamed you, Tony. You don't mean that, Snug. I wouldn't want you to. Now, them mules just flat refused to work for me. But they ain't never kicked at me nor crowded me. And they sure broke the back of my pride. For all I've been telling you how much I know about mules. Looks like I don't know nothing. Well... Maybe it ain't like that at all, Tony. Maybe them mules just can't be bothered pulling a light wagon. See, you, you know that fallen log at the top of your pasture? Well, maybe if we put a chain to it and gave them a really heavy maybe load... Maybe so. Well, yeah, mules has got their pride, too. Let's roast us out a drag chain and find out. I, I don't know, Tony. This, this log, it's a lot bigger than I remembered it. Yeah. Their legs is a whole lot stronger than you think. Now, now come on, take the range and get them going. Gosh, Tony, suppose they won't even... Now shut up now. Don't be putting the wrong ideas in their heads. Mule even knows what you're thinking. Now go on. Okay. Well, where do you want your old log dragged? Now you're talking. Any place down near the barn. Okay, here we go. Come on, Moonbeam. Crowder, hop! Yeah, look at them grab a hold. That's it, boy, that's it. They're moving, Tony. They're pulling the log. Come on, you mules. Get going there. Look at them work, Tony. Look at them. Well, ain't you nothing to say to them? You bet I have. scut a scut a hey! Act two of scut a scut a hey will continue in a moment. Suppose, Livy, a business firm hired an ex-army officer sight unseen. Uh-huh. Would you expect a man? Oh, probably. If I hadn't seen RKO's clever comedy Bride for Sale. When Claudette Colbert turns up as the former army major, the fun begins. Is she efficient? Oh, yes, very. But she's also looking for a rich husband. George Brent and Robert Young make it a riotous triangle with slapstick complications. Claudette has done her share of stunts in pictures. Mm -hmm, but Bride for Sale has one that tops them all. She gets buried under 200 pounds of fish and ice. And loses for the moment her reputation as one of America's best-dressed women. <laughs> oh, but not for long. Her clothes are really lovely. Even her own lingerie is especially designed and made up in a shade to complement an individual costume. Of course, she insists on Lux Flakes care for her lingerie just as the studio does. That's a tip for every girl who likes pretty undies. A good tip. She can have more slips and nighties if she gives them Lux Flakes care. Lux undies stay lovely three times as long. The colors this fall are irresistible, from maple sugar satin to bright red chiffon with black lace. 
And some of the new nylon 90s come in wonderful high shades like jonquil yellow, hunter green, and royal blue. It doesn't pay to take chances with such lovely colors. Wrong washing can soon fade them or tear precious lace. These tiny diamonds of luxe make suds fast, work fast, yet they keep undies color fresh three times as long. This fine product of Lever Brothers Company gives such an outstanding performance, makers of fine washables from coast to coast recommend it 33 to 1. Here's our producer, Mr. William Keeley. Act two of Scudder Who's Scudder Hay, starring June Haver as Rad and Lon McAllister as Snug. A couple of weeks have gone by, and with Tony as his teacher, Snug Dominey is working small wonders with his team of mules. Now, on a Saturday afternoon, Rad McGill has a visitor. Look who's here, Rad. Superman. Hmm? Oh, hi, Stretch. What are you doing over here? Oh, just happened to drive by. Well, we're busy sorting eggs. Bean. There's a dance in town tonight, Rad. Want to go? Oh, sorry, but I can't, Stretch. You watch those eggs. They don't grow on trees, you know. Relax, small fry. Can't go, huh? What's the matter? Got a date with Snug? Snug? Don't be silly. The minute he's through working here, he's off with those mules of his. <laughs> I bet he's sorry he ever got stuck with them. Sorry? Why? He's driving them. <laughs> Are you kidding? Your pa couldn't even get a bridle on him. Yeah, I know, but Snug and Tony's got them, so they'll haul logs and everything. What's he going to do with them? Sell them? Of course not. He's going to work out his year with pa, like in the contract, and, and then he's going to get a job at the logging camp. Make $15 a day, he says. 15 bucks a day, huh? Well, uh, I'll be seeing you, Rat. Now, what'd you do that for? Do what? Telling him all about Snug's plans. Gosh, Rad, you talk too much. Who is it? What do you want? It's me, Mr. McGill Stretch. Uh, what's on your mind? It's, uh, well, it's business. Maybe if you come out here on the porch, you... Well? Now, look, take it easy, Roy. You know them mules Snug done you out of? Done me nothing. I'll get my money back, won't I? Snug knew what he was doing. Them mules will drive. Drive? What can't be bridled can't be drove. You saw it yourself. Well, I just now saw them mules are hauling their own weight as easy as kiss my foot. Yes, sirree. Snug sure stuck you good. <laughs> you want to stick them back or don't you? Go on. I'm going to take them mules down to the logging camp. They pay $15 a day. That's 90 bucks a week. We split it. Them mules ain't mine no more. You've got a contract with Snug, ain't you? Yeah, sure. Five bucks a week out of his pay. But if that contract gets broke, them mules are yours again. All you do is fire him. How would that help? Snug could easily get another job. Not if he's in no shape to work. Like, if he got beat up so bad... Now, I don't could... want any trouble, you hear me? Look, won't be no trouble. All you gotta do is fire him. Fire him, huh? That's all, Aurora. And leave everything else to me. <laughs> Red, you still awake? Hmm? Why aren't you asleep? I can't. I've been thinking about Pa. Pa? Do you suppose he says his prayers every night? Uh, I don't know, honey. Why? Well, if he don't, he sure ought to. And just in case he don't, I think I'm going to pray for him right now. <laughs> well, we're going to church tomorrow. Save it for then. Oh, I'll pray tomorrow, too. I think Pa's going to need all I can give him. Uh, good sermon, Reverend. Right to the point. Thank you, Mr. McGill. Thank you. And good morning, Reverend. Uh, good morning, Red. Well, how pretty you look. Why, thank you. And you too, Bean. <laughs> Were you in Sunday school? Oh, sure. Mom always makes me. Uh, well, good for Mom. <laughs> well, well Rad, if you're looking for Stretch, don't waste your time. He don't never come to church bad as he needs Oh, it. hush up and wait in the car. Hey, look. Look, there he is. Stretch, where? Not Stretch, Snug. And he's got his mule hitched to wagon. Hey, Snug, Snug, wait for us. Hiya, Bean. Hiya, Rad. Uh, the one I should drive you home, Rad? Oh, that'll be fine. 
Uh, want to come along, Jess? Sure. Want to ride, Jeff? In the mule wagon? Sure. Huh? Come on, Larry. We'll all go. Oh, hey, now, wait a minute. I only asked Rad. <laughs> okay, okay, Snug. We don't need a special invite. Thanks a lot, Snug. Now, just a minute. Rad sits next to me or nobody goes. Oh, for heaven's sakes. What a fuss to make. Oh, all right. Are you happy now? I'd be a lot happier if you hadn't asked the whole town. What makes you so mean? He's jealous, that's all. You shut up. Well, it's true. Hey, these mules sure drive good. Boy, this is fun. Snug doesn't think so. But maybe he'll think it's fun to go swimming this afternoon. Huh? Oh, sure, Rat, thanks. Oh, that's all right. How about it, boys? Let's all go swimming this hey, afternoon. Fine, no idea. Idea. <laughs> oh, fine. <laughs> What are you sitting here by yourself for, Snug? Go on in the water. I've been in the water. And quit staring at Rad. She's only trying to burn you up. Anyway, I got something to tell you. Well, skip it. Hey, Rad, cut it out, will you? What'd you say, Snug? Don't bother us, Snug. We're busy. Yeah, beat it. We want to be alone. You leave her alone. Uh, uh, temper, temper. Nobody's bothering me. Oh, quit showing off, Rad. I'm not going to stand for that. Is that so? Now, you listen to me, Snug Dominey. You may own them mules, but you don't own me. Rad, please stop. Take your uh, hands off me. Hey, the way they fight, you think they were married. Hey, hey, where are you going, Rad? I'm only kidding. Come on back. Oh, you're all behaving like a bunch of kids. Oh, let her go if she wants to. Come on, Chess. Let's go after okay. her. Okay. Hey, Rad, Rad. Now, if you listen to me, Snug, I'll tell you something about them mules of yours. What about them? Well, yesterday I, I sort of heard my pop making a deal with Stretch. They're planning on getting them mules away from you. Oh, yeah? How? Well, Stretch is going to beat you up so bad you won't be able to work. Then you'll miss out on the payments, get it? Are you telling me the truth? Gosh, I wouldn't lie about something that makes my pop practically almost a crook. Does Rad know about this? Of course not. Do you think my own sister would be on her way to see Stretch if she did? What makes you think she's going to go see Stretch? Because she's been itching to all morning, and you acting so bossy gives her just the chance she's looking for. Thanks a lot, Bean. I'd sure like to see the fight. Okay, if I come along... You stay right where you are and keep your mouth shut. Yes, sir, I sure fix stretch good, Tony. Oh, still now. Ouch! Is that horse liniment? Yeah, that's horse liniment. I ain't never heard no horse complain, neither. Boy, it's a wonder I didn't kill him. You should have seen him, Tony. Well, there's one eye you won't be using for a long time. And there's an ear you ain't going to use neither unless you hold still. Yeah. So poor old Stretch finally got what's been coming to him, eh? You know, I've been thinking, Tony. Now Stretch won't ever tell what happened today, and neither will his maw. Not in your life. And Rad won't tell either. Not after what happened to that pretty boy Data hers. Well? Well, so with nobody telling, I can easily get Roar McGill to fire me. What are you talking about? Gee, Tony, you ought to borrow the brain of a mule. After he fires me, I take my team over to the logging camp and we go to work full time. Fifteen bucks a day, partner. Less five dollars a week to roar. Well, sure. But now, first off, we got to... Hey, somebody's coming. Uh, it's rad. Well, you don't want to see her, do you? I'll run her off for you. Huh? Oh, yeah. Who do you think you're fooling? <laughs> Now get out there and talk to her. I had to come over, Snug. Are you all right? I'm fine. Let me see. Oh, Snug. Why don't you go look at his face? Maybe he'd like you to hold his hand. You've got a right to be sore, I suppose. And how? I hope I never see him again. Well, it's no skin off my nose if you do or if you don't. Oh, don't say that, Snug, please. Unless you really mean it. Did you mean it when you said you never wanted to see him again? Hope to die if I didn't. Well, that, now that's better. Oh, Snug, your poor lip. Ah, uh, it ain't nothing. It don't hurt. You mean if a girl was to try to kiss you, it, it wouldn't be painful? Want to try? Uh-huh. Well, I've got to find out sooner or later. Did it hurt? I wouldn't be known by a little peck like that. Try it again. 
did it hurt that time? Yeah, and it was swell. Well, what is it, Snug? What's Pa so mad about? Me, he just fired me. Listen, you can still hear him roaring. Fired you? But why? Because I left the tractor running, and when he started to bawl me out, I told him to go jump in the creek. Snug! Oh, now see what you've done. I've done just what I planned to do, Rat. I wanted him to fire me. Why? Snug Dominie, if you don't start talking sense... Look, do you want to be Mrs. Snug Dominie someday? Well, yes, Okay, but... then, you just keep quiet. Oh, now, look, Roar, I know I'm sheriff, but I got more important things to do... I than... tell you, it's in the contract. And if the contract's broke, them mules is mine. Yes, but the contract isn't broken. It's Saturday night, ain't it? And Snug ain't showed up to pay me my five dollars. But you fired him. Snug's working for the Logan Company. Darn right I fired him. Left my tracker running when Sweet. I called him. Out of I you told do? you Pop yeah, called the sheriff. What's happened to Snug? Where is he? I don't know. I saw him about an hour ago. He can't find Tony. Tony? Yeah, Tony picked up their paycheck. But then he disappeared. Snug can't find him anywhere. Well, he better make it here by midnight. Or Pop sure as heck will take back them mules. <laughs> Tony, oh gosh, what a relief. Where you been? Tony, you've been drinking. Oh, don't get mad at me, son. Wait till you see what I got in this bundle. No, never mind about that. I got to get over to McGill's. I don't get like this very often, son. I, I know, Tony, I know. I'm sorry, son. I just... Sure, you, uh... you, you just found a bottle of cooking bourbon. Oh. Now, come on, let me have five dollars. Five dollars? Well, sure, I, I got to pay Roar. Oh, well... It's here someplace. I got it someplace. Here, well, first, let me show you what I bought. Tassels, Snug, you see? Red tassels for Crowder and Moonbeam. The money, Tony, where is it? You've spent it all. Spent it? It could be. Yes, sir. Could be. I spent it all. Oh, Tony, Tony, don't pass out on me. Could Wake be. up, Tony. Yes, Listen yes. to me. It's too late to try and borrow the uh, money. I gotta have five dollars or I'll lose my mule. Hello? Rad, this is Chess Hunter. Oh, hello, Chess. I, I got something to tell you, Rad. It's about Snug. What about him? Well, it's just a... Well, you know I work for the telegraph company and... And, well, a message just come through. I ain't supposed to talk about them, A but telegram I... for Snug? For his stepmother. They notified her because, well, because she's the widow. Oh, no. Yeah. Mill Dominey, buried at sea. Oh, poor Snug. So will you tell him, Rad? Snug don't live at home no more, and even if he did, that old woman wouldn't tell him anyhow. Yeah, yeah, I'll tell him, Chess. Thanks for calling. Rad, you threw on that phone? Oh, yes, Ma. Come on, the kitchen. He's here, snug. Just walked in. And he ain't got the money, Rad. He just told Ma he ain't got the money. Ma, you've got money in the house. You must have five dollars. Oh, how could I, Rad? Your pa'd never forgive me. Oh, there must be something we can do. Ma, why do you suppose pa's so mean sometimes? He just can't stand being made to look foolish, I suppose. In the Bible, it says when people do bad things, they roast in eternal fire. Will Pop roast, Mom? Will he, huh? But I had the money, more than enough. Only, only Tony took it and got drunk. Well, now, that's just too bad. It moves me to tears. Well, you heard him, Sheriff. Now, do I get my mules or don't I? Uh, you, uh, gotta face facts, son. But I'll, I'll give him the money on Monday, and, and I'll double it then, ten instead of five. Not if you said fifty. But what good will the mules do you? They won't even drive for you. They'll drive or I'll kill them. I'm going to go to Tony's place right now. I'm going to take my mules. And you're coming with me, Todd, to see that it's done all nice and legal. Roar, don't take the mules. Please don't take them. They're talking nice and polite to me now, ain't you? Give me a hand, will you, Todd? These mules is kind of ornery. I can't... Pa, no. I've got the money for you. Rad. Five dollars, Pa. I'm paying it for snug. Go on, look at it, why don't you? It might be counterfeit. I wouldn't want my father cheated out of anything. Now, Rad, just a minute Before here. I was old enough to go to church, you and Mom taught me the Ten Commandments. 
Thou shalt not covet, you always taught me. Fine one you was to talk. Not a moment since you sold those mules to Snug, but what you coveted them and, and tried to get them back. No, Rad, don't let him take them. You listen to me, Rad. I ain't going to stand That's for no... That's right. Roar, bluster. You've done it all your life, scaring the wits out of Ma and me. Well, you don't scare me anymore. You can holler till the cows come home and it still wouldn't make the wrong you'd done right. Where'd you get this five dollars? She gave it to me, Mom. She didn't mean to double-cross you, honest, she didn't. It was just that, well, she knew this was wrong. Oh, Pa, how could you? How could you? Well, sure. You got your money. Yeah, I got my money. I guess he keeps the mules all right. Rad, don't cry, Rad, please. I've been waiting for you, Roar. You're out late. Get out of here, Stretch. I don't feel like talking. Holy Moses. What happened to your face? I, uh... Had a little smash off my car. Looks more like somebody whaled the daylights out of you. Now, what do you want hanging around my place? It's about them mules. I don't want to hear about them mules ever again. You forget we got a bargain about them? Well, it's off. Get me, it's off. You crazy or something? Now, hearken you, Stretch. I want no part of you, and I want no part of mules. Not Snugs or anybody else. Okay, Aurora. Back out on me if you want to, but I ain't backing out, see? And you better not try to cross me up. What are you trying to tell me? If I can't have them mules, Snug ain't going to have me to. And you keep your big mouth shut, because if you start talking, I'm liable to talk, too. Good night, Rora. We pause now for station identification. This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System. KNX Los Angeles. Before our stars return for Act Three of Scudder Who's Scudder Hay, I'd like to introduce lovely Dorothy Malone, a featured player at 20th Century Fox. Tell me, Dorothy, what do you do for recreation? Oh, watch other people make pictures, Mr. Keeley. I just couldn't keep away from the set when Daryl Zanuck was filming Pinky. A moving human story with a great message. You know, Jean Crane handles remarkably well the sympathetic role of the beautiful, light-skinned Negro girl. Yes, and did you know they tested 17 top players before they picked William Lundigan to play that young doctor she falls in love with? And Pinky will be remembered, too, for the fine portrait of a cantankerous but warm-hearted southern aristocrat. Who but Ethel Barrymore could do justice to that part? Hmm. Remember those scenes with Jean Crane as Miss Barrymore's nurse? They were shot over and over, and yet, every morning, Jean's white nylon uniforms looked as fresh and crisp as ever, thanks to Lux Flakes, Mr. Kennedy. As a matter of fact, Dorothy... Nurses in real life use Lux Flakes for nylon uniforms, too. They can be luxed in a wash bowl in a matter of minutes, dry in a few hours, are ready to wear without ironing. Jeannie tells me she's really keen about nylon fabrics because they wash so easily. Of course, she uses Lux Flakes. The tiny diamonds of Lux really work fast, burst into rich suds that float away every trace of dust and soil. And Lux Flakes are wonderfully kind to colors. There will be more nylon fabrics than ever next spring, in lovely, clear colors. It's foolish to risk wrong washing methods. Tests show that Lux Flakes keep colors lovely up to three times as long. Remember, anything safe in water is safe in Lux Flakes. Thank you for coming tonight, Dorothy Malone. Now, our producer, Mr. William Keeley. The curtain rises on the third act of Scudder Who, Scudder Hay, starring June Haver as Rad and Lon McAllister as Snug. It's a moment or so later. Rad's father has gone into the house and slowly climbed the stairs. Oh, hi, Pop. Where's your ma? She's asleep, Pop. Well, what are you doing there, Bean? I've been getting a drink of water. Oh. Why ain't you in bed? Well, there ain't any water in bed, Pop. Well, run along now, scatter. Want to come and tuck me in? Oh, all right, I'll tuck you in. Oh, wait a minute. As long as you're up, stand against the wall there. Let's see how much you've grown, huh? How much, Pop? Oh, looks like more than an inch. Gee, I'm sure going to town. Pa, 
You gonna get them mules? Don't you dast even mention that word to me again. Mules is a plague on this house. Now get to bed. I'm going. Did Rad come home with you? No. Rad's still over to Tony's. She'll be coming along presently. Oh, Pa's dead. Buried at sea. I'm glad it was you told me about it, Rad. Thanks. I'm so sorry, Snack. Ah, uh, that's the way he wanted it. I just wish he could have seen my team once before it happened. You, uh, you talking to me anymore, Snug? It's okay, Tony. You couldn't help it. Evening, Red. Hi, Tony. I, uh, I heard what you said about milk. You want this, Snug. It's his will. Yeah. You own more than a team of mules now. You own the Pa's farm. And what about stretching his ma? I'll take the will over to Judge Weller in the morning. That piece of paper, Snug, is just like your pa's fist come back to knock them both out of that farm. So the Dominic can live there again in peace. Well, it's about time, Tony. Yeah, you know, that farm makes sort of a nice home for both of you. That is, if that's the way you feel about it. Well, it'd take a lot of fixing up first. Well, it's pretty late, Rad. Come on, honey, I'll, I'll take you home. <laughs> Just put Crowder and Moonbeam to bed, Snug. You still figuring up how much you made? Yes, I can tell, Tony. We made 114 bucks this week, and half of it's yours. I don't want no part of it. Might get on another one of them spending sprees. <laughs> but you gotta have some money. I'm eating regular. It's okay if we eat. Mm, you ain't got the sense of a meal, but you got the harder one. You going over to McGill tonight? I ain't been washing up for you. Mm. <laughs> I figured to go into town and see what Judge Willard decided. You reckon them mules all right by themselves? Sure. Who'd we'll try and take the mules now that we got old Moore cooled off? Yeah, I guess you're right. Yeah, I'll see you later, Snug. Yeah, Snug. Rad'll be down in a minute. Thanks, Miss McGill. Well, here's the five dollars I owe Roar. I could pay him more if he'd let me. I'd, I'd sure like to own that team outright. I know. I spoke to him about it again, but he won't listen. He lays awake nights figuring how can he even the score with you. <laughs> Not a chance. Well, he'll get over it. Just happens he's still pretty mad. He'd be even madder if he knew about Rad and me. He'd yell his head off. <laughs> but I'm glad. Well, here I am. Gosh, you sure look cute, Rad. Thank you. Well, are we staying home or are we going out? Well, I think I better steer clear of your paw for a little while yet. It's a wonderful night. We could sail the skip up to the falls, maybe. Oh, what are we waiting for? Um, don't worry, Miss McGill. I'll have it home early. <laughs> Well, it was. Now it's going to rain and spoil everything. I guess you better head for home, Snug, before we get drenched. No, we're a lot closer to Tony's. Let's stop off there till it blows over. Snug, isn't that a boat over there at the shore? Huh? Yeah, I wonder... Red, that's his boat. That boat belongs to Stretch. Well, why would he be coming over to see Tony? Tony's not home. It's the team, Red. It's his way of getting back at me, the mules. Do you mean that Stretch would... Oh, hurry, Snug, hurry. He's there, all right. That's Ruff barking at him. Oh, then Stretch wouldn't dare break him. Oh, but Ruff knows and he'd let him in, all right. He'll probably... Oh, what was that? Somebody screaming. Stay here, Rod. I'll soon find out. Ruff, oh, get out of there, boy. Get out of the way. Help me. Crowder. Crowder, get back. Back, Crowder. Hey, Stretch, can you move? I don't know. I guess I can. I ought to let you get out of that door like you got yourself in. Back, Crowder. Back. No, no, what happened? It's all right, Rad. Come on in. Stretch. I guess he'll live. You just forgot that Crowder don't like strangers. But those wires over there, what are they? Stretch can tell you. It's a trap, Rad, a wire snare. We figured to cripple the mules. Looks like it didn't quite work out. Hmm. Are you hurt bad, Stretch? Uh, all right. Then you get off this place before I shove you back in that stall. Oh, what are you going to do about this? Plenty. But if you want to stay out of jail, just tell your mom to start packing her things. Hers and yours. <laughs> Snug, Stretch and his ma. Ain't likely you ever see him again, either. Well, I guess that's that. Yeah, it seems to me they piled off a lot of stuff in their car that belongs to you. <laughs> Let him have it, Sheriff. I told you to take everything that wasn't nailed down. I uh, don't like evictions as a rule, but 
This one done my heart good. <laughs> I gave them one hour to get across the county line. And believe me, they'll cross it. <laughs> yes, Hug. You best let that place air out for a while. Take a month to clear the smell of evil out of there. Where are we going now, Snug? Back to Tony's place? I sure, Snug. I'll fix this up a regular feast to celebrate. Well, later, maybe, Tony. Right now, I think we'd better get over and see Rad's paw. I think it's about time we told him about us. Hmm, he's not going to like it. Get off my land! I'll have you jailed for trespass, you hear me? Kind of stuck, aren't you? Stuck what you'll be if you don't get. And you, Rad, if I catch you keeping company... Yeah, no, one problem at a time, there. Eh? Seems to me you'd have more sense than try and drive a tractor across a plowed field after such a heavy rain. See, the way you're fixed, Ross, with this ground hard and it'll take dynamite to get you out. And you're going to lose a pile of money with no tractor. Maybe even half a year's work. Get your neck over here where I can reach it and I'll show you who loses what. You want me to pull you out? You pull me out. You and what? Me and my mules. You could try, couldn't we, Tony? I don't know. That tractor will get in two turns. It could be. I bet they can do it, Pa. Two mules doing what a 40-horsepower engine can't? You're all crazy. Well, maybe so. If you was a gold man and had the guts to make a real bet, I'm the one who'd bet you plenty that it can't be done. Like what, for instance? Snoop, you still owe me for them mules. I'll bet if them mules can pull this tractor out of the mud, you don't owe me nothing. No money, no work, and they're all yours. And if they don't pull you out, what then? Then they're mine to do with it as I see fit. Well, go on, Snug. Take him up on it. They can do it. Take him up. Well, if I take the bet and win, will you give me your leave to marry Rad? What gal with any sense marry the likes of you? I would, Pa. Well, well, is it a bet? It's a bet. Okay, Alan, hits the team. Come on, Rad. You mind if I holler in a few of the neighbors, Rad? This will be something worth watching. Worth laughing at, you mean. Go ahead, call them in. This way, Crowder. Now, that's a bean. That's a girl. Whoa, now. Whoa. Hey, hook that thing on the tractor, Tony. Hey, get her, Snug. Just get this straight. Out of the mud. Clear out. Till the tractor can go by herself. In other words, straight ahead to solid ground. Okay, start the tractor roar and then get off. I'll drive it. Well, you'll need my help, won't you? Stand aside and stay put. Okay, she started. Give me the reins, Tony. Better pull fair, Roy. Them folks over there will bear witness that'll run you out of church for the rest of your life. You're burning up my gas. Get going. Yeah, Carter. Moon the old girl. It's up to you. And if you don't get this packer out, I'm switching back to Horsey. Hup now. Hup. Come on, Moonbeam. Come on, Carter. Dig in, Carter. Dig in, boy. Look at them go. Look at them go. They moved it. They moved. An inch, baby. It's got to move 50 feet. Moonbeam. Carter. Hup. Come on, Horsey. for their curtain calls in a moment. If you have trouble, trouble, trouble with washing dishes, change to Lux Flakes. And they will bubble, bubble, bubble your troubles away. These gentle suds are richer. To dishes quicker. Let L-U-X bubble your troubles away. Yes, these times of Lux. It was done in a hurry. Rich suds bubble up fast, last longer. In fact, wash more dishes ounce for ounce than any of ten other leading soaps tested. They're thrifty. And they rinse away so completely, dishes dry sparkling bright without wiping. Gentle Lux Flake suds are wonderfully kind to hands, too. Leave them soft, smooth, lovely. Here's Mr. Keeley with our stars. It's always a pleasure to bring back for a curtain call two such charming people as tonight's stars. And here they are, June Haver and Lon McAllister. Thank you, Mr. Keeley. 
It's nice to be here again. And I'd like to thank everyone in the class for being so wonderful, especially the mules. <laughs> <laughs> they deserve a curtain call, too. You know, I think they'll settle for a little Hey, June, since you're a judge in our 15th anniversary Lux Girl contest, I know you'll be interested to learn that the votes in the preliminary contest are pouring in pretty fast. Is that the contest to pick the most beautiful Lux Girl? And I'm very thrilled that I was invited to be a judge. Pretty big job. There must be a lot of Lux girls. Well, soon has help. Mark Stevens, her co-star in the 20th Century Fox picture, Oh, You Beautiful Doll, is also a judge. I uh, think you should know that at least one of the judges was asked to get some Lux Flakes. Huh? I'll save you a stop, Your Honor. You'll find some Lux Flakes in the wings. Uh, what play are you producing, Mr. Keeley? It's David O. Selznick's dramatic hit, Portrait of Jenny. And starring in it, we'll have Joseph and Anne Baxter. This is the story of a strange romance, of a love that went beyond the world of reality. And next Monday night, just to bring it to you. Oh, that sounds wonderful, Mr. Keeley. Good night. Good night. Good night, and thank you. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, this is United Nations Day. In the past 12 months, the United Nations provided the means for stopping war along one-fourth of the world's population in India, Indonesia, and the Middle East. It's our best hope for peace. So remember this record and give your support to the United Nations. Lever Brothers Company, the makers of Lux Flakes, join me in inviting you to be with us again next Monday evening when the Lux Radio Theater presents Joseph Cotton and Ann Baxter in Portrait of Jenny. This is William Keeley saying good night to you from Hollywood. Heard in tonight's cast were Ed Begley as McGill, Tim Graham as Tony, Tony Barrett as Stretch, Norma Jean Nilsson as Bean, and Helen Spring, Bill Johnstone, Noreen Gamill, Cy Kendall, Eddie Marr, Charles Wolfe, Clark Gordon, and Howard McNear. Our play was adapted by S.H. Barnett, and our music was directed by Louis Silvers. This is your announcer, John Milton Kennedy, reminding you to join us again next Monday night to hear Portrait of Jenny, starring Joseph Cotton and Ann Baxter. Well, folks, the Lux Radio Theater's 15th anniversary contest for Lux Girls is in full swing. Who's the prettiest Lux Girl born in 1934? See the pictures of your six local candidates and get voting instruction slip at your grocer's. Choose your favorite, write her name on a Lux toilet soap wrapper, and send it to this station. Remember, you can vote as often as you wish. Listen for the name of the lucky winner from your area to be announced on the Lux Radio Theater November 21st. Her picture, along with the pictures of the winner in all other local areas, will be sent to Hollywood. Then, June Haver and Mark Stevens, stars of the 20th century Technicolor production, Oh, You Beautiful Doll, will select the national winner. Hurry, vote for your favorite 15-year-old Lux girl today. Be sure to listen next Monday night to the Lux Radio Theater presentation of Portrait of Jenny, starring Joseph Cotton and Ann Baxter. Stay tuned for My Friend Irma, which follows over these same stations. This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System. <laughs>